Good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday. Just waiting on our waiting on our Facebook audience to join. Good evening, everybody on TikTok. to our Sunday live broadcast. Uh, we do this every Sunday. We bring you a fresh word from God. And I'm grateful and thankful that the Lord chose to use uh, someone like me. Today I have a really good word for you. I think it's an encouraging word. Um, this would be one of those messages and I don't do this often. But when I do do it, uh, there's some purpose behind it. I would like to encourage you to share this message with a friend, share this message on your page, share this with someone who just needs to hear an encouraging word about love and life and afterlife and the future. Uh, this is a message that I believe should resonate with everybody, everybody. I'm going to say a word of prayer and then I'll jump right into today's message. Again, thank you for joining us on Facebook. Thank you for joining us here on uh, TikTok. And then for our, our audience that will be watching this on uh, TikTok later. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to preach your word. I thank you for this opportunity to share. I thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We trust you with our lives. We trust you that you know what's best for us. All we ask, Lord, is that you give us the strength to make it each day. Give us the strength and the motivation to be the light and the salt you called us to be. Lord, give us everything we need today to live holy and righteous lives. Lord, may we be the examples you called us to be in peace, examples of love, examples of joy. It's in the name of Yahshua we pray. And Lord, I do ask that whoever you want to to see or hear this message that you send them here well you control everything you control the algorithms you control the internet you control our lives you control our ups and our downs lord if it's meant for someone to see today's message hear today's message lord send them send them we trust you i'm trusting you take control of my mouth take control of my mind take control of my thoughts it's in the name of yahshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to stick to my notes uh, as given to me. But as always, you guys know, I have the freedom and the luxury to, to fall outside of what the Lord is preparing because he'll drop a word of knowledge in my spirit right there. So today, I want to talk to you about homecomings. Homecomings. I've had the remarkable opportunity to experience two homecomings in back-to-back -back weekends. Uh, weekend before last, I got to be a part of my high school homecoming, and it has grown leaps and bounds. Shout out to everybody who went to Star Spencer High School from the classes from the 60s and 70s all the way to the, the classes of the 2022s, 20, 23s. And so, when we first started doing homecomings, I can remember a few people would show up, a few classes would show up about you know 20 years ago, 15 years ago, even 10 years ago. And that homecoming would consist of a few tables, a few barbecues going on, and people laughing and having a good time enjoying one another. Let me tell you what has happened at Star Spencer's homecoming over the last five years. It has grown leaps and bounds. It has grown to a point where that entire parking lot is full of every class taking up two or three parking spots at a time tables and music and uh, barbecues and tents and everything in between and you have people laughing and talking laughing and walking and what's amazing in within itself is think about it you're in school for four years and so as a freshman you know three classes above you, you know three groups of people, three age groups above you. And then when you're a senior, 
you know three groups of people below you. So at any given interval, you knew at least seven different classes on you know yourself and then the three on either side. And what's great about Star Spencer is there's family groups. Some families have two, three brothers and sisters, cousins that all went to school together within certain age ranges. And so you inevitably have this reunion at Spencer where everybody is connected, everybody. Somebody who went to school in 78 had a cousin or a brother who went to school in, in 85 who then had a kid who a brother or cousin that went to school in, in 90 and it just keeps going. And so it's nothing but love. It's nothing but joy. People put down their differences. We, we, we put aside any kind of squabbles. You may have a few people who have cold shoulders, but at the end of the day, it was nothing but love. Waves, hugs, good times, tell me how your kids are doing. You felt the warmth of what family felt like. And each year, I have no doubt about it, that Star Spencer's homecoming next year is gonna be even better than the one they had this year because more and more and more people hear about it, they get excited about it, and they want to be a part of it, okay? You can go on to the different various friends and family members on Facebook and see all the different pictures that we're in. This weekend was my college homecoming. Uh, in Oklahoma, we have an HBCU called Langston University. Shout out to everybody who knows Langston University, that's been a part of Langston University. Uh, Langston's homecomings are unlike anything in this state. It's unlike any other HBCU's homecoming because what's unique about Langston, Oklahoma is that it's the only HBCU in the state of Oklahoma. Anyone who doesn't know what an HBCU is, it's a historically black college and university. In the year of 1897, this is what was founded. It was a, some land that uh, some of our leaders and, and uh, you know our, our legacy uh, pioneers founded a university because we couldn't go to the PWIs. That's another story for another day, but there's a legacy at Langston that has grown since 1897. And everyone in Oklahoma who didn't get a chance to go to the OUs and the OSUs of the world ended up at Langston. People from Chicago who, who didn't have a chance to go to college, maybe with a grade point average of 1.9, had an opportunity to excel. And there's so many leaders around our world with that Langston education because it's like family. Let me tell you about this Langston homecoming. The tailgate is like times a hundred of what I just explained about the Star Spencer tailgate. You have all these classes from different years and then you have sex within the classes. You have the AKAs and the Sigmas and the Alphas and the Omegas and the, the uh, I don't wanna leave anyone out. Uh, the Deltas and, and all the different groups. Then you have groups like myself, who I played basketball, college basketball. So you start connecting with everybody who ever played college basketball. If you were in the band, you, you literally connect with all the people who was ever in the band at this HBCU. And so it's this amazing event where everyone is loving on one another, having peace with one another, being kind and cordial to one another. We're reminded of the good times. We're reminded of some of the sad times. We cultivate a culture of inclusivity where it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your language, your, your history, whether you came from a lot of money or no money at all, you're lying. And the, the feeling, gosh, I wish I could explain this, and I'm gonna post tons of pictures from this weekend here later today on my Facebook and my TikTok site, but it was an amazing opportunity. Now, the difference between the, the high school reunion and the, and I'm going somewhere, you're probably feeling this in your spirit. The difference between the, the high school reunion and the, the college reunion is that the ones in the college reunion, not all in the high school go to college. Not everyone in the high school takes that next leap and bound. Doesn't mean they're any lesser than, doesn't mean that they're, they're different. It's just a different path in life. And so you had an audience there who, again, I'll use the word, were your leaders of the world. People who are excelling in helping those maybe 
in, in dire straits and economically deprived situations rise up. And so there's this networking, these conversations that are going on. How do we lift up the areas? How do we network to help those unfortunate rise to the occasion? Grandkids and nieces and nephews and who needs opportunities. Like it's amazing what a little bit of knowledge, just a little bit. We're not smarter than anybody else. Just a little bit of knowledge can, ex oh, this is good, Lord. I'm trying to be patient. Will excel you to new levels, new opportunities, growth. I, I could go on about the two homecomings and, and, and I will here shortly, but it got me to thinking uh, as I was at the first reunion, I said, Lord, I, there's a message here somewhere. There's a message here about homecoming. I'm going to wait till next weekend and, and, and see what you show me, what I experience, and we'll go from there. Again, both homecomings were full of grace, peace, love, and joy. Uh, there was a grace there that regardless of what was said, what was done, beefs, different things that may have happened years ago, we gave each other grace. There was an amazing grace that said, I know she or he may have said something years ago, but right now today, it ain't a big deal. And we extended grace. Uh, there was a peace there. It was something about walking around your own university, your own high school, where you knew nothing was going to happen to you. Nobody was going to start any mischief. You were in a safe place. You were in, you were in, in uh, like in a uh, incubated. That's the word I'm looking for. It was an incubation of peace. It was ours. A peace that no one gave us. No one was going to take that from us. I don't care what your rivalry was. That was us. And then there was love. Oh, when I tell you that we love one another in these universities and high schools, we do anything for our brothers or our sisters that we went to school with. If they need money, if they need a helping hand, if, if they needed a kidney, we do anything in our power to help a brother or sister out. That's love, willing to lay down your, your life for somebody else. And then there was the joy, a joy that was unspeakable. Like there was sometimes literally you couldn't, you just smiled, you hugged. It's a man, it's what you've been up to, man, what you've been up to. And you just smile, man, I'm so happy to see you. Man, I'm happy to see you. There was a joy that regardless of what your circumstance was at home, what you were dealing with at home, what, what issues and challenges you were dealing with, that was your strength that weekend, the joy of seeing your brothers and your sisters. So as I considered the earthly homecoming, whether it was high school or college, I actually believe that it was the dress rehearsal for the ultimate homecoming. Like he is preparing us for what it's going to be like. For all those that I don't go to reunions and I hadn't been to a reunion in forever. I'm going to encourage you, you go to your next reunion. Go to your next reunion because it is the preparation ground for what we're going to see in heaven. I believe that the celebrations and these past gatherings that we have or what the Bible speaks of in heaven when he says, I turned around and I looked. And there was a number so big that I couldn't even count it. Wider than the sea. And I asked the angel, who, who are these people? Revelation chapter 7. It's again in Revelation 14. And he explains, these are all those who came out of tribulation. And the great tribulation. They, they came out right before things got bad. They come out right before what we're getting ready to show you, John, about the, the bowls and the wrath of God. They just came out of this before the world gets set on fire. We brought them out. And he said they were from every tongue, every tribe, every nation. And they had the seal of God on their foreheads. They had on their white robes. They all looked alike. They came from the same place. What was that place? A place in Christ Jesus where only and only in Christ alone can you've been redeemed. So I believe that homecomings where there might have been some sadness in the previous years, when you get to homecoming, there are no more tears. There's no more crying. You just want to laugh and have a good time. 
the great homecoming. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more worrying about uh, the, the, the things of yesteryear. We will be reunited with loved ones that we hadn't seen in a long time that have gone before us. Well, we can finally stand in the presence of the Almighty God and Father and say, man, I've been waiting to see you. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting to meet you, Abraham. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting to talk to you, John. John, I know you didn't write everything down. Matthew, I know you didn't capture everything. Tell me what else happened. There's going to be reunions with Ruth and Esther and Joseph. How he overcame and Job, like what a reunion this is going to be and get to see my grandma and my dad and other relatives that I haven't got to see in a while and be nothing but joy. See this, this homecoming down here, these homecomings down here doesn't even compare, won't even compare to, to what we will get to experience when we get to go home with the Lord. As you go about your life on this earthly domain, I want you to remember, and I'm not going to be long today. I'm going to give you a couple of more scriptures, but I want to encourage you. I want you thinking about homecoming. Uh, this is just a foretaste. The joy you have around some people, because some of you, I know it, I already know it. Some of you don't go to reunions because you don't want to deal with certain people, or you don't want to deal with all people. Perhaps you, you feel like you are a, uh, uh, what's the word? when you uh, don't want to be around a lot of people someone help me in the, in the chat and you don't want to go it's not a big deal to you it's, it's not a big deal to see certain people and I, I just was there a couple of weeks back or a month back but it's home that, that's homecoming your other visits weren't homecoming you didn't get to see everybody you didn't get to fix your eyes on all the people. You just maybe saw a couple of people. Well, man, I see people all the time, but it's homecoming. The Lord wants you to know I'm declaring to you today that we have a homecoming being prepared for us. I've been preaching this since January 1st. The Lord has put it on my heart that he's coming back soon. And the last two homecomings have just reinstated, reinvigorated the passion that he, he's been sharing with me all along that I'm coming. I'm coming whether for everybody or I'm coming one by one, I'm coming. And he wants you to prepare for this celebration. He wants you to be prepared and ready to go when he calls your number because you don't know. You don't know. You, you don't know. And I pray that your affairs are in order. And when I say your affairs are in order, a lot of times people say, what does that mean? Does that mean, you know, getting your checkbooks right and letting your family know where all your accounts are and making peace with everybody? No, that's not getting your affairs in order in my definition. My definition of getting your affairs in order is accepting Christ as Savior. Surrendering your life completely to doing what He wants you to do. No longer living a life of sin. No longer living a life of debauchery and wickedness. No more allowing the corruption and the slavery of sin to control your thought patterns and your life, your, your ambitions, and completely saying, God, I'm yours. I encourage you today to get it in order because your homecoming can either be good or bad. Your homecoming could be like the five women who thought that they were going to see Jesus and they didn't have their, their lamps trimmed. They, they, they weren't prepared. They, they didn't do it fast enough. And when it was time to go home, they were outside knocking. And the Bible says, Jesus said, what do you want? Let us in. Let us in. He said, I don't know you. You, you didn't take the time to get to know me, so I don't know you now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. I, 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 and here's why you shouldn't wait. For those that are out there saying, well, I just want to get my life together first. Or I want to do some things first. I, I haven't had any fun yet. I still got some things I want to do. Well, it, is it worth it? Is it truly worth it? Is it worth spending the next 
hundred years of eternity for a few years of pleasure down here, someplace you don't want to be. So the serpent was the most craftiest of all. He walked up to Eve and asked her a question. And it was a simple question that he asked you and I today. Did God really say? Fill in the blank with your temptation, your lust, your, your pleasure, your, that thing that still kind of tugs at you, that thing that's forbidden. Because what we do know, we do not know the actual fruit, but the key word in that sentence that you underline is forbidden. Fruit is not the subject of that, of that scripture. It was the word forbidden. Oh, do we want the forbidden things? Oh, do our eyes crave and lust things that we shouldn't have, we shouldn't want. The, our flesh sees what the world is doing and we think that we're missing something. We feel like we gotta have it. And so the Bible says that Eve's eyes saw that it was good. Pause. Nowhere in that chapter, we're in Genesis chapter two, did it say that God said the tree was good? It was called the tree of good and evil, but nowhere did God say that that tree was good. See, everything around you isn't necessarily good. He, Eve had to be convinced, deceived, manipulated that it was good. The things that are happening in your life, things that, are, that have brought you to a point where you think that the very thing that you love to do is good. And God has not condoned it. He has not signed off on it. He didn't co-sign to it. You made a decision that it was good. You convinced yourself it was good. The devil convinced you that it was good. And the devil comes to you right now and says, did he, did he really say you couldn't smoke weed? Did he, did he really say you couldn't sleep around? Like, is, what's the harm? What's the harm? Did he really say you couldn't kind of fudge your taxes? Did, did he really say you shouldn't be on the internet looking at those? I mean, did he, what's the harm? The same deception today. And we say, well, I like doing it. I ain't bothering nobody. It's between me and God. And God ain't punished me yet. So I'm, it, it must be okay. In that story, God did not jump in and stop Eve and say, Eve, 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 whoa, 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 what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing, Eve? Because of free will, he allows you to do what you think is good. Part two of that story. So Eve said in her eye, I think this is good. And then the Bible says she desired it in her heart. She went from saying, I think that's pretty good over there to now lusting or desiring it in her heart, saying, you know what, I, I really want to do that. She was deceived, she was manipulated to now want it in her heart. I'm here to warn you today. I'm here to encourage you and warn you at the same time. There's no condemnation, but I pray that the Holy Spirit right now is showing you that some of the things, not all of the things, some of the things that you have desired in your heart that you really want to do, that you think you just, it's just not want to do it. That the Holy Spirit will show you that it's forbidden. It's forbidden. That, and here's how you can test it. Here's how you can test it. If Jesus was here with you right now, sitting right next to you or going to the place that you were going to go, of course he's with us. But would he would he join in? So a lot of people say, well, God was with me at the club. God was with me at the strip joint. God was with me and, and you know, he protected me at the casino. He protected me in my sin. Yeah, he does. That's called amazing grace. That's called amazing grace. The question that you should be asking yourself, would Jesus participate? Be careful what you enjoy. Be, be careful. I'm not... I'm not condoning anybody. I'm not saying marijuana is wrong. I'm not saying going to the club is wrong. I'm not saying go to the casino is wrong. I'm asking you to judge in your heart what you desire most. And if that desire of the forbidden outweighs the Lord or the Holy Spirit in your ear saying, you know this is wrong, right? You, you know that 
taking this action is it's not right and it's a tug it's not christ will never yell at you he'll never point his finger at you he'll never tell you that you're getting ready he just wants you to repent and turn so now eve is here at the story and we have no idea of the conversation between her and adam zero zero idea all the bible tells us it's almost like this this big old gap and she gives the forbidden to her, her husband. He partakes. We don't know if it was a conversation. We don't know if they had a back and forth. If they debated, it just says she gave it to him. Brothers, be very careful. Be very careful. And I'm being careful how I'm going to say this. I want the spirit to lead me. Be careful what you're brought into. Be, be, be careful of, of what you accept simply because someone else said it's good. So someone else in their eye said it was okay. Someone else thought it was it was acceptable. And they desired it. So then they pull you in. And now you caught up because of what the other fellas did or what the guy said in the locker room or what she said or what your boss said and you didn't judge for yourself in your own spirit if this was right or wrong mm -hmm. so many messages in this story i'm, I'm getting I'm, I'm finishing this is my first close i get two they eat the fruit the forbidden let's just put it at that they did something that was forbidden and they knew immediately when they did it that it was wrong. Have you ever got to that point in your your journey where you thought that what you was doing was right? You thought that there was no no issue with it. You, you justified it. You gave yourselves many many excuses and reasons to get away with it. And in the minute that you do it, the Holy Spirit says, "Not not 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 not." The devil leaves you. Deception leaves you. Manipulation has run away from you, and all you're left with is truth. Yeah, what you're feeling in that moment is the truth of God because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will remind you of all things and that he will comfort you in that moment. And what you feel is not condemnation. You feel truth. You feel a reminder of comfort like, man, why did I look at that? Why did I go over there? What did I do? Did I really do that to that, this, that, and the other? And you start having a conversation with yourself and you start repenting. Lord, I promise I'll never do it again. Lord, if you just give me one more chance and you start making all these promises to God. And God is not about keeping promises as much as he just wants a full repentance. Adam and Eve, wh why are you hiding? Why are you, why, oh, this is so good. Why are you hiding? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you right now? Where are you? God is asking you, where are you? Where are you? Come out. Come out. Where, why, are you, why are you hiding from God? Because you can't hide from God. The Bible says that God walked and they heard him walking. God is here. The Spirit is here walking. He's walking all around you through people, through the word and the atmosphere in your spirit. And you're hiding. You're ignoring. You're, you're acting like you don't see it and hear it. And God is saying it's wrong. That was forbidden. That was wrong. That was forbidden. That was wrong. But you went along with it anyway. And now he's asking you, where are you? Hmm. Where are you? And they said, we, we're hiding because we're ashamed. We, we feel guilty. Who told you you were? Who told you? See, we think that God is going to come out and say, who told you to eat the forbidden fruit? No, his first question to Eve and, and Adam was, who told you that you were naked? First question was, where are you? Second question is, who told you that you were naked? See, at that moment, sin entered into man. Disobedience entered into man. It was at that moment in history that we all became rebellious, disobedient. I asked God this question in my Bible study. I said, if Adam and Eve didn't know right from wrong. There was there was no good and evil that they knew of because they hadn't partaken of the fruit yet. This is one of those Bible questions a lot of people run away from because then it 
can make the Bible look like it's inconsistent. But I asked God anyway. I said, give me revelation knowledge. Give me a word of knowledge. Give me wisdom. If she did not know to do wrong, if she had no sin in her, how did she sin? If she had zero rebellion in her, how did she rebel? If, if she had zero inclination to be wicked, to say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, go the wrong, to the wrong place, what, com, what, what led her in her essence to do something that was, wasn't even a part of her? Because they, they haven't ate the tree yet. They haven't eaten of the tree of good and evil. She did not know good. She did not know evil. They were innocent. They were innocent. So how did she sin before she sinned? That's a good question. I don't know if anyone's ever, ever asked God that question. Maybe the Lord gave it to me as I was just reading and I was wanting to know and he gave me knowledge. I said, so what, how is that possible? You know what I read, at least the interpretation that I got was, there was no sin in Eve and Adam, zero. Zero. All they had at that point was observation. Observation. That tree's good. That tree's good. That tree's good. That tree, don't go over there. It's your choice, but don't go over there. You, you know better than to stay out that late. Don't go over there. You, you, you have the decision to, to do what she asked you to do. Do what he asked you to do. Your decision, good, good, good. Don't go to that forbidden. Satan comes into the picture. And it was Satan who deceived. Because her answer was, that serpent deceived me. He deceived me. He lied to me. He manipulated me. He tricked me. He told me one thing and I got there and it was something else. I thought it was going to be X, Y, Z and it was A, B, C. And he tricked me. Who are you? The answer to the question, they didn't sin. All they had was observation. All they had was curiosity. They were innocent babies being curious. Still had a choice, curious. Satan came in and ruined it all. I want to encourage you right now for the person who says, I can't stop doing what I'm doing. And I got these bad habits. I got these addictions. I got this... I can't explain it, Ken. I just got this, this, this feeling on the inside of me that sometimes I just want to be wild. Sometimes I want to go and do this, that, and the other. I just, I got this inclination on the inside of my flesh to just sometimes. And you condemn yourself and you feel guilty. You feel ashamed. You want to hide from God. You say, Lord Jesus, don't look at me right now. I'm naked. I'm naked in my addiction. I'm naked in my sleeping around. I'm naked in some of the things that I won't even tell anybody about. Don't nobody know but me and you, God. And, and, and I'll go to the grave with those things in my heart. I'm, I'm naked. Ha! I want you to know that your nakedness is not your fault. Your addiction is not your fault. Your, your, your sin, your rebellion is not all your fault. Yes, you made a decision, but... There is another entity on the earth that's really strong. His name is Satan. He's the serpent. He fell from heaven. And in his frustration of not being uh, in control, because he thought that he should have received the same glory that God had, he set out to destroy our lives. He set out to do something that that only... What would you do if there was no uh -oh, food left? Give me a second here. He, he set out... Food till it runs out like 99%. He set out to try to destroy us. And he knew that if he could get to us before Adam and Eve had children, then guess what? He could ruin the entire bloodline. So he has them either the convinces them to eat the, the, the forbidden thing and ruins everything. I'm encouraging you right now that even in your own willpower, where you think you made bad decisions, which we all have, we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. God is letting you know today that there's a way out. He wants to see you at the reunion. And we're all just like Adam and Eve. Every last one of us. We also are all like Jesus Christ. Because he's given us the opportunity to make right what Adam and Eve broke. 
Hear me when I say this. You can make right your situation based on another decision. It's all willpower. It's all a choice. It's all decisions. Life's about choices. You've made a decision to, to think wrong, do wrong, act wrong. But you said, but it's hard. It's hard. Man, it, it's so hard, Ken, to, to stop doing that thing that I my flesh craves to do. It's, 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 not, it's, it's difficult to pull away. And there is some science behind that. There actually is some science that says you've done the thing so many times. Uh, the dopamine and serotonin in the brain releases this pleasure, this, this chemical release where you actually enjoy what you thought was bad. Now it feels good. So it, it is hard. But I got a God who can do the impossible. I got a, I serve a God who can take hard things and make them right. But but the first step in all that is surrender. Surrender. Like I give up. You, you ever see on those cop shows? And, and I hate to use analogies of cop shows because of what's happened in our community with bad policing. But there's good policing. I have tons of good policemen friends and, and people in law enforcement. So there's some good to this. So stay with me on this analogy. Get your hands up. Put 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 everything down. Put it down. Put put it down. Put it down. And, and they draw their weapon because they have to protect themselves. They want to get home to their families. And, and they're asking uh, the, the person who could or could not be guilty, just for this moment, surrender. Stop. Put everything down and get your hands up. Put it down. Put, mm, this is good, Lord. Put it down. That forbidden thing. Put it down. Put it down. And sometimes they have to say it two or three times. And the, the person slowly puts it down and they just drop it. Praise God. Lord, I'm dropping it. I'm done. It's in the surrender that the Holy Spirit can then do the work. So you don't have to try to get it right. You don't have to try to stop doing what you're doing to come to Christ. That's the fallacy. That's the deception. That's the manipulation that worked on Eve. He deceived her. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to make this a sexist thing. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Sometimes we try to be too politically correct in the Bible. I'm of no religion and zero denomination. So I just preach what the Bible preaches. Eve was deceived. Then she deceived her husband. Stay with me there. So that's why I keep referring to Adam, I mean to Eve and Satan. It was Eve and Satan. And so it was the same deception that was used of, did, did he really say that? Are you sure? And she gave in. But in the same way that she gave in to the deception, you can give in to God and surrender. And you say, okay, 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 I I. My hands are up. I'm not resisting. I'm not. Oh, Lord. Thank you. I'm not resisting. You hear him say, stop resisting. Stop resist. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not resisting. I'm I'm serious. You can check me. Mm. Can the Lord check you? Can he check you? Mm. We try to check ourselves. <sighs> we try to fix ourselves. We try to get ourselves right before the Lord. Lord, after I finish that cabinet of Henny, after I finish all those blunts, then, then I'm going to be for real with you. God is saying, do it right now with a cabinet full. Come to me right now with, with plans for this weekend. But Lord, let me get through with my plans this weekend. And then I get, Lord, let me get to my 21st birthday. Have a good celebration for my 30th birthday. And after my 30th birthday, no, 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 no. The time is now because you don't know when your homecoming is going to be. Surrender. All right. Quit resisting. All right. I'm not resisting. And then what they do, they try to pat you down. I went to a... Don't want it to end again. I went to a, 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 a gathering last night. We'll just call it that. I went to a gathering for our homecoming celebration. And there were some bodyguards out front, you know, looking through our bags, patted me down. I mean, it was a good pat down too. He went around the front, down the leg and up in, and he was making sure that I did not have anything on me that would compromise the get together, the gathering on the inside. So he patted me down. God wants to pat you down. He wants to see if you're, if you're serious about entering into uh, this gathering. He wants to know how serious you are. Your part is just to surrender. 
And if, oh Lord, this is so good. If you have something on you that you shouldn't, he'll remove it. He'll, he'll remove it. You, if you accidentally say, man, oh, I forgot. I forgot I had that in there. That's okay. That's okay. God said, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it because I, I want you to go into the gathering and have a good time. Oh, we had a good time in the gathering last night. I don't agree with all the music that was being played, so I, I tried to not listen to the lyrics, but I had a good time. I enjoyed myself with my wife, but I was only able to get through there after the pat down. I was only able to get through there after I was willing to say, go ahead and search me. Huh, this is good. Some of you need to surrender right now and say, go ahead and search me, Lord. Search me. I need help. I'm here. I took, I took a big first step in coming. Search me. I surrender. My hands are up. I quit. I'm, I'm done. And now I need your help to, to turn that desire, that fleshly desire to want to do things maybe that are forbidden. That's the key. Whatever your forbidden is, he's saying, I'm here. I'm here. And, and I'm going to bring this all together. Here's my last. I'm closing. This is my second close. I'm closing for real. For you to make it to the homecoming of the Lord. For you to be a part of this great homecoming. And I do want to. I, I visited one of my pastor friends and mentors this morning at his church and he kind of said something similar and I was like man uh, same page same spirit I do want to meet Eve and Adam too I want to meet Eve first and then Adam we'll have another discussion in Bible study on why they're in heaven and they didn't accept Jesus again that's a great question to ask we'll answer it another day but I want to meet Eve I want to hear exactly what he looked like what was so appealing that, that made her consider her creator's word to, to think twice about it. See, we've been given the, the creator's word, the, the word of God, this old school Bible. And we've been given the creator's word. There's truth in here. There's promises in here. There are no lies in here. What the young people say, no cap. No cap found in here. He's promised you eternal life in here. He's promised you peace in here. He's promised you joy everlasting in the homecoming. He's promised you a fulfillment of good things and crowns and robes if you surrender. No cap. But we'll choose the forbidden thing over a promise. We'll, we'll choose the thing that, that our flesh kind of wants to do over the promise. And he says, if you would just surrender and come to me, I'll give you eternal life. John 3, 16. He loved us so much that he saw the mess that was made with Eve and Adam. I'm paraphrasing, putting it all together. That he knew that he had to do something. He knew that there was no way that we were going to make it into the, this homecoming if something wasn't done because we could not keep the law by ourselves. We could not keep command. We, we kept choosing the forbidden. Thou shalt not lie. We chose the forbidden. We lied. Thou shalt not steal. We, we chose the forbidden. We stole. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not look at things you shouldn't want. We, we continued doing that. And he said, there has to be a way for us to make it right with man because of Eve and Adam's mistake. Jesus said, I'll go. There's only one person that can do it. It's me. I got the purest blood. I'm the only righteous person. I'm the only holy person. And I can handle it. I created this together, me and you, Father. So if I put the world on my shoulder and sin on my shoulders, I I can take back what was stolen from the people we created. Mm. So I love I love I love what we created so much that I'm willing to to give my life. And here's the only stipulation: you don't have to make any other promise than this: that whoever believes that he is savior, surrenders, they'll get to go to homecoming. That's it. You get to go to homecoming. Well, I feel bad about some of the things I've done and I don't think God will forgive me. Romans 8 and 1. There is zero guilt, condemnation. You will be acquitted. 
There's no trial. There's no jury. There's zero condemnation to those who accept Christ as Lord and surrender. They'll take the handcuffs off. They'll erase it from, from the law book. There will be no record of you ever committing sin. John 3 and 17. We know 16, but 17 says, For God did not send Jesus to the world to point the finger at us and condemn us, but to save us. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If anybody out there surrenders and comes to Christ, you're new. You're a new creation. You're new. All that other stuff you did doesn't even matter. He doesn't even look at it. It's gone. God doesn't even know what you're talking about. He, he sends his spirit to live in you and you get to be a part of the future homecoming. Listen to this. Romans 8 and 33. So who will bring any charges against those who God chose? Who? Satan? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. No one can ever say anything about me. Ever. Well, we saw Ken and, and we heard Ken said and we thought Ken and the word on the street is that Ken is doing, you can't condemn me because you didn't die for me. Jesus is the one who died for me. More than that, he was raised to life. So guess what? He's going to give me the homecoming. I'll be raised to life. Colossians chapter 2, 13 and 14. When you were dead in your sins, when you were out there doing the forbidden, when, when you were desiring those things that you know you shouldn't want to do, you were of the flesh. God made you alive though through Christ. He forgave you of all your sins, having canceled the charge of legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has now taken it away and he nailed it on the cross. Homecoming. I'm telling you right now as I close today that there's a homecoming available for you. Your homecoming is soon. Anybody who's over the age of 30, you'll get 40 years, maybe left to live 50. And not even promise that. If you're at the age of 40, you might get 30 years left. If you're at the age of 50, you may get 20 years to 30 years. You don't know. You don't know. If you're in your 20s, you say, I got a lot of time left. Let me tell you, 20-year-olds leave this planet every day for reasons that we don't control. God controls them. And I want to encourage you to not wait, to not find yourself in a situation where you weren't serious about the Lord and you missed the homecoming. Oh, there's going to be a homecoming. There's going to be a lot of joy and a lot of peace and a lot of love and a lot of regatherings and hugs and kisses. And you want to be a part of it. You don't want to miss it. Oh, we've been advertising this homecoming for, for years. We've been putting flyers out and announcing the homecoming is coming up. Get your seat. Get your ticket now. Well, how do I get a ticket? It's free. Huh. <laughs> it's free. It doesn't cost $99. It doesn't cost $15. You don't have to buy a, a tailgate for, for 40 bucks. It's free. Well, who paid for it? Yahshua with his blood, with his own life. He paid for your homecoming ticket. He paid for your entire weekend. He paid for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the brunch. All paid for. All of it. All you have to do is say, I'm down. I I want to give me a seat. If you want a seat today, I'm inviting you. Because the homecoming is going to be amazing. Three small points and I promise I'm done. There were some people that we were looking for at the homecoming. High school and college. You meet somebody and you say, hey, man, have you seen old John? Have you seen T Tammy? I'm just making up some names. No, man, I hadn't seen her. She said she was going to come. I ain't seen her around here. There's going to be many people that we love that they tell you all the time they're going to try to get it right. That's why I wanted you to share this message today. It's still time to share. Share it on my Facebook. Share it on my YouTube later when I upload it. There's going to be people that we're going to get to heaven and I don't know how God is going to do this, but in my head, I want to see everybody. I want to see everybody that I know in heaven. I want to see them at the homecoming. 
But if I don't see them, is God going to make me forget they ever existed? Am I going to be sad that they're not here? Because there's no sadness in heaven. There's no crying in heaven. So I don't know how that works. I can't explain it. The Bible doesn't speak to it. So I'm going to be silent. But I want to make sure that you don't miss it because we're looking for you. There are also some people, you always find out, they say, man, I didn't know homecoming was this weekend or last weekend. Man, I, when was it? And they, they truly act lost, like no one told them. They, they're not on Facebook or they didn't run into a classmate. And so they had no idea homecoming was even available. Listen, I'm asking the Christians, the laborers of this world, let people know homecoming is coming up. You have an obligation, Paul said, to share the gospel of Yeshua. You are the hands and feet of Christ. You, Jesus said, go out to all the nations, making them disciples, teaching and preaching. You have to let people know that homecoming is coming up. Don't be the person when we get to heaven and God said, 15 people didn't make it to homecoming because I wanted you to tell them. There were people I put in your life, in your circle. No one else was in that cubicle. No one else worked with them. No one else was a neighbor to them. No one was sitting next to them at ball games. I put you next to them and you ignored them. You didn't want to talk to them. You thought they were too much. You felt like they were an inconvenience. You thought that it was just, he said, I intentionally put you next to them because you were the salt. And now they missed homecoming because you didn't tell them about me. You didn't live for me. Lord, thank you for this message today. Homecoming. And then there were some people that found out at the last minute. Like they found out literally the week of or the Friday of. Someone gave them a call. They ran into somebody. They saw it on Facebook. They're like, wait, 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 wait. Homecoming is, is this weekend? And they got their tickets. They, they rented a car. They were at Langston or Star Spirits or the various homecoming that was there. And they showed up. I've talked to people. Man, I... I found out on Wednesday, and man, I was I, I made sure I was here today. I didn't even know homecoming was coming up until so-and-so, so-and-so told me about it, or I saw it on Facebook. Listen, if you're that person that feels like it's too late, I've almost missed Christ, God won't take me back, it's okay. It's absolutely okay to find out at the last minute. The Bible tells of a story where people were in a field, and they were working all day long, and the ones who had been out there all day was giving a wage. But then there were people who worked the very last hour. And as they worked that last hour, they did exactly what the other people did. They only did it for one hour. And so the master came out to pay everybody what they were due. And he gave everybody the exact same wage. And the ones who had been doing it all day complained and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've been doing this all day. How did they get the same pay that we got? And Jesus, or well, the master goes on to say, the wage is the wage. Whether you worked one hour, you worked eight hours, I just needed you to, to do, do the work. I don't care how long you live the way you've lived. I don't care how long you've been addicted to what you've been addicted to. I don't care if you think you can't get over this. The time is now. Your opportunity is right now. Homecoming is around the corner and it's never too late. Don't ever let the devil deceive you to say, well, it's, it's too late, man. I can't get a ticket. I've lived, I've lived a life of sin. I've lived this way way too long. God will not accept me. Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to read this and then we're going to pray. If you can go there with me or if you just want to follow along. Romans chapter 20. We talked about how Satan deceived Eve, manipulated her told her something that wasn't true and she followed through on something that wasn't true. Romans chapter 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he took hold of that dragon, the serpent of old, who was the devil, Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it up and sealed it so that he would not deceive the nations any longer till a thousand years were completed. We'll talk about a thousand years in another Bible study. I've actually done one already. You can go check it out. Uh, 
on YouTube. As the Bible actually comes to a close, two chapters left in the entire book of the Bible, and they describe Satan as the deceiver, not a liar, a deceiver, not a wicked one, a deceiver, not the one who was prideful in heaven, heaven but a deceiver. Everything you've ever done in your life, you were deceived to do it. You are manipulated. You heard something, thought something, and you took another turn. You took another path. It could have been early in your childhood. You had no idea. Like Adam and Eve, age of innocence was taken from you because someone deceived you, manipulated you. They, they, they kind of pulled you into something that you didn't know was right or wrong. They didn't know right or wrong. And they ended up doing something anyway. We're their story. We're them. And there's a way out. There's peace. There's joy. There's hope. I invite you today. Lord, thank you for this message. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the inspiration to speak. Thank you for speaking through me. Thank you for taking over my lips, my mind. I didn't even get to all my notes on paper, but you, you said what you needed to say for who needed to hear it. I trust you and I thank you. And now, I'm asking, Lord, that all those whose hearts are prepared to surrender, that you start moving by your spirit. Yeah, move by your spirit on the people you've already predestined, preordained. You've already ordered their steps to hear this message. They're watching right now. They didn't know this was going to happen, but you did. And now, Lord, open them up to you. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Let me get my glasses out because I want to pray with you and see who this is. If this is you today and you're ready to surrender, if you know somebody that needs to hear this, share this message later. But if you know for a fact that you've been going after the forbidden, you've had a desire in your heart for forbidden things, just surrender. God said, there's no condemnation. I love you. There's zero condemnation. I love you. Give me, put your name in the chat now. And I, I may have missed it. My, my screen just refreshed. refreshed. So Ken, will you pray for me? Will you, will you help me understand and, and truly grasp this thing called salvation? And I want to pray with you personally. Verily, verily, I say to you that whoever hears my words and believes them who sent me, so Jesus said this, will have eternal life and they will not be judged at all. At all. Romans 8.38, I'm convinced that neither death, life, angels, demons, present, the future, powers, anything high, anything low, anything small or great, anything in all creation will never ever be able to separate me from his love. That's what you feel right now is his love. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law and sin by becoming a curse himself who died on the cross for our sins. Repeat after me. Father, thank you. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your incredible love and your amazing grace. Thank you for this opportunity to surrender. Thank you for the opportunity to prepare for homecoming. Lord, if you would look in my heart, I repent of those forbidden things. I repent of sin. I repent of wickedness. I repent of rebellion. I, I'm sorry. It's on me. I, I know I should not want to do that, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I repent. I'm turning. I'm done. I'm completely done with it, and now I need your help, Holy Spirit, to be done with it completely. Help me. Come on. Finish. Continue this prayer with me. Help me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to do right, to act right, to live right. Help me to no longer desire the forbidden things. Fill me with your spirit and continue to help me grow in my walk with you. And I look forward to the homecoming. Come on, say that to yourself. Lord, I look forward to the homecoming. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of what's out there. I know that you got me. I know that it's going to be amazing. 
I know that we're going to see our friends and family members. It'll be a, it will be a joy that we can't even explain. Thank you for the opportunity to experience this. <laughs> it's in the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen. All right. Again, share this message with somebody. Uh, it's going to be on Facebook probably within 10 minutes after I end the broadcast. And I'm going to upload it to, to, to YouTube uh, probably within the next hour. Please share this with somebody who's missing the mark. I pray that the Holy Spirit encourages their soul so they don't miss homecoming. We pray Monday through Friday. For all of our prayer warriors out there, I see a few of you on the line. Thank you for joining. We pray every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. right here on TikTok. We pray with one another and for one another. Please join us as we pray for our friends and family and our world all together. On Tuesday nights, my wife and I hold a Bible study right here on TikTok and on Facebook. We go live. We've been studying a series or doing a series called Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? We studied Joseph's life. We studied Esther and Ruth's life. The only two women in the Bible uh, that has an actual book named after them. This week we're going to be studying Paul and all of the issues he's gone through. And we're going to ask this question. Why? Explain it. Join us on Tuesdays. This Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central. Okay. Again, thank you for your time today. I pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Until next time, I will see you again. Hallelujah. Thank you.